Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Videos. Always thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm digging deeper into the anime film Jinro. Now, um, this is going to be a spoiler full video, meaning that if you haven't watched it and you want to stay spoiler free, you better go watch the movie before watching this. Also, I'm not going to go into every single detail about Jinro. Uh, this is the kind of film that has a lot of um, imagery, a lot of metaphorical uh, imagery that um, you can take in lots of different directions. And so you can um, analyze this, especially in terms of its imagery, in lots of different ways. So I'm going to kind of avoid trying to assign meaning to a lot of those things because, again, we could kind of be here all day doing that. So let's start off by talking about the major themes of Jinro. And one of the central ones certainly is personal responsibility. We take actions and those actions have consequences. And what are they? This is handled in this film particularly because it's dealing with a military group or a quasi-military group where you follow orders. And the idea behind that is you follow orders and you don't have personal responsibility because you're simply following those orders. And it deals with the fact that that's not always quite that simple. Um, often you do things that traumatize you, that change you. And this is not to be negative against the military and say that, you know, that that's a, a bad approach. It's to say that um, that approach doesn't always work as cleanly as folks would like it to. And so we see that uh, play out in the film in how uh, our main character deals with the trauma of seeing this girl die and deals with the question of, okay, what, are, what responsibilities do I have for my actions? Woven into this is the theme of lack of choice. The fact that uh, we are often constrained by the choices we make into making other choices. And this is referenced several times specifically by characters saying, I had no choice. Of course, this is a very, very popular theme in anime and Japanese uh, cinema in general. And Jinro tackles it really head on because uh, these characters are kind of stuck where they are in, in a very real way. They can certainly choose to take other actions. And they certainly do that and they choose other, other courses. But even those decisions often draw them back to where they were before. They end up not escaping. I don't want to say they can't escape, but they end up back where they started. And this is also tied into a theme uh, relating to the modernization of Japan. Uh, Jinro is set during a time in Japan where Japan was going through a great economic miracle. It was modernizing, it was um, seeing great economic progress, but people were concerned that Japan was losing its soul that um, it was forgetting its tradition. Some commentators have said that there was this huge national discourse during the time to, to determine, do we move forward? Do we look back to our traditions? What do we end up doing with those things? You know, Japan was a very traditional culture for a long time. Jinro deals with this time where there's a lot of strife, where there's a lot of just general national questioning of the direction of the country. Um, you know, was this pursuit of televisions and cars, as we see about two-thirds of the way th through within the, um, the Little Red Riding Hood scene while they're, they're, they're traveling together. You know, that's all about consumerism, that whole sequence. And this question of, okay, are we losing our soul by moving forward? Uh, and more importantly, maybe not losing our soul, what are we losing? What are we sacrificing for this? What's being pushed out? All right, now let's talk about some of the more remarkable moments in the film. And certainly for me, the, um, uh, the big one, well, the, the, the initial scenes in the sewers were certainly memorable. But the, the, the first scene that really grabbed my attention was the one halfway through um, where the girl's being chased by the wolves in the sewer and they, they uh, attack her and tear her apart. Um, and interestingly, um, it's not so much for the imagery of that, it's for the editing. The fact that we jump back and forth between an external view of that close-ups, lots of different views on that. And then, of course, intercut with the main character as a wolf, which becomes an important um, uh, image throughout the course of the, of the movie, an image both in dialogue as well as actually on the screen. It's remarkable because we get um, this clearly false image. You know, we know that we're not, you know, we know that that's not actually happening to her, but we wonder what the symbolism is of that. And then when we realize what we think the symbolism um, is of that, and then when we see him as a wolf, 
it just drives home these themes of responsibility for our actions. By intercutting in all these different ways, it further pulls us back from the actual action of the moment. And I mean, Jinro's animation, we know it's not happening anyway. And so by adding further distance from the subject, it allows us to be a little more cerebral, a little more intellectual about the moment. Also interesting is the scene later on with uh, the two characters in the museum seeing all the stuffed animals. Because of course stuffed animals are what? They're dead inside. They are shells. I think that uh, works in nicely with the whole theme of um, our main character being kind of dead inside. While rewatching the film, I was also struck by how quiet of a film it is. It is slow. It's very slow. Um, now, Mamoru Oshii's films are slow in general. And by the way, he didn't direct it. He just uh, conceived and wrote it. Um, but still, it's very much an Oshii style film. I was surprised at how deliberately it's paced. And I don't mean deliberately just in terms of intentional, but in terms of how we just take a lot of time with scenes. I find this frustrating personally, but I understand that it's meant to um, let us kind of live in those moments. Indeed, the music is half of this movie. The music is most of the emotion of the movie. <laughs> Most of the characters are pretty emotionless. They're pretty robotic. Seeing how that, or listening to how that music you can sweep you along or feel sad, it really tells you what the scene is trying to get across in a way the characters don't. And that's partly because it's an extremely political film. Um, and political in multiple senses. Not only is there um, uh, a lot going on between these different groups and one group trying to infiltrate that group and all that kind of stuff, it's also dealing with the politics of the time. This is not that long after World War II. Um, there's a lot of power struggles within the government. And then, of course, they're dealing with the student protests. So there's a lot of complexity to the political situation at the time that Jinro tries to um, reference on screen. So that makes the movie, I think, harder for Americans to appreciate. I think it's something that the Japanese, uh, Japanese audience can more readily understand because they're used to these sorts of power struggles, and they're used to hearing about these power struggles um, you know, on TV and, and in newspapers and so forth. Whereas for us, it's a little more bizarre. These things happen in America, there's still plenty of power struggles, but that tenor of power struggle is a more Japanese thing than an American thing. It's also interesting that Jinro is not heavily stylized, i.e. the character designs are, are quite simple, and in that way, it's, it's, I think it's one of the reasons why Jinro is a little harder for American audiences to get into, because the characters all tend to look at the same. And no, not because they're Asian, I'm not going there, but because um, they, they, they have very simple lines. You know, the, 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 the simple outlines of the characters and the simple, you know, just facial um, construction and, and facial features are very similar character to character. Um, it's one of the reasons why anime tends to have wildly different character designs so that you can tell um, people differently, um, despite the relatively simple lines of anime. So the fact that they went with a more realistic approach in that sense makes, the, makes Jinro, ironically, heavily stylized by anime standards. It, it doesn't look like a typical anime film. And I think it's, it's, it's neat that Jinro manages to stand out by being more normal. So those are some of my thoughts on Jinro. I'm sure you'll have others you'll uh, add in the comments. Again, you could certainly um, delve into a lot of the imagery um, and, and talk about uh, comparisons and contrasts of imagery, but we could, you know, we could do that forever. And, and I'm sure the imagery is there to evoke those discussions. For now, I hope, you've, I hope this helps you um, find Jinro at least a little more interesting. Uh, and I hope there are a few of these things or things you may not have thought of, who knows. In the meantime, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.